Hello everyone! Welcome to the fifth lecture of Archline XP 2022 Intermediate course, which will be the kitchen design and the storage furniture. Let's get to work. I open the kitchen design profile from the course folder. We will be working on this project and we will be creating drawers with different doors, changing door fronts with different method, creating hidden handle fronts, and we will also creating curved kitchen elements. Let's get started. I activate the 3D view. First, I create two drawers under the oven in this tall cabinet. I click on the cabinet, then on the pencil icon. In the dialog, I can set its properties. From the list on the right, I select the front and then the shelf. I click on the green arrow to enter the zone to modify it. I place a horizontal division in the zone without a shelf. The division must be placed in the middle of the zone, so the slider must be at 50%. I use the green tick to create it. I click on the Drawers tab, then select the top zone. I select the option Single with Front. The reason I don't choose the Multiple Fronts command is because I'm going to add different fronts on the two drawers. With the green tick, I create the first front which I will convert to a custom one. I select the third tab on the side and uncheck the box next to Apply the default. I choose the wood wench front. Then I create a drawer in the lower zone, keeping the default setting. I click OK to accept the changes. In the next step, I will replace one front of each cabinet with different color. Let's start with the tall cabinet. Again. I use the pencil icon to enter its properties. Before we selected the element we wanted to edit from the list on the right, now I'll show you a simpler method. I can select any element by clicking on it while holding down the Alt key. I will change this upper front to wood wench. On the second tab on the side, I uncheck the box next to the default setting and select wood wench front from the list. I accept the changes. Let's change the front on this wall cabinet too. In the dialog, I Alt plus click to select the bottom front and then replace it. It's done. In the following, we will create a hidden handle front. To create new door front, I use interior KBB cabinet door. This is not a material, but an element, a body, which has different properties, for example, thickness, material. Now I'm creating a front 20 mm thick. We can do different edits. We can create an insert profile, a glass front with the whole command, or we can add or subtract a profile. To create the hidden handle, we will use the subtract and add profile features. We will cut a 40 mm piece from the front and then use the add profile tool to make the hidden handle. Let's look at the process. I click on the Subtract tab. I need to specify the path of the profile. This time it will be horizontal. Then I need to specify where the profile should be placed. I can set this at the bottom right, leaving the same offsets option on. I overread the values to zero, then turn the option off. I unlock the button paddock. This moves the profile 0 mm from the top. Unlocking the paddock means that the distance there will be a calculated unique size that the program will calculate for all fronts of the different width and lengths. By fixing the two side values, we can assure that the front fits on the cabinets of all sizes and the handle does not end after a specific length, but adjusts to the cabinet size. Next, I need to specify the cross-sectional cutting profile. In this case, it will be a rectangle. Its width is 40 mm and its height is 20 mm. Clicking on the cogwheel icon, I change the reference point of the profile to the top left. We can see that the reference point of the cutter profile is on the top edge of the front now. Clicking on the green tick, I have cut 40 mm off the top of the front. Now I'm going to place the hidden handle with the Add Profile tool. Here again, I need to specify the path of the profile 
which is also horizontal one. I will set the values as I did before. I set the distance to zero, then turn off the same offset option and unlock the button padlock. It is in place. I need to specify the cross-section profile, which will be aluminium 2. If it is not appeared in my favorite library, I can select it from the library by clicking on the blue plus sign. Here I also change the reference point to the top left. Here we can see it fits nicely over the top of the front profile. In the third tab, I can choose a unique material for the item. I tick the custom material option and select the bright aluminium material from the library. The last step is to save the cabinet door. I select the last tab and save it as Front Hidden Handle Upper Ash. I choose the kitchen as category and the cabinet door as subcategory. For the manufacturer, I type my initials. I have one more thing to set up before I close the dialog, and that is the material of the door itself. I go back to the first tab, on that to the second tab, and select the old ash tree from the library. I override the front I just saved. I accept it and place the cabinet door. I make another front like this one, but with a darker wood bench material. I click on it, then use the pencil icon to enter its properties. In the tab I just used, I said wood bench material, then I save this one to the library as front double H upper bench to the same categories. Now I'm going to create two fronts with the hidden handle on the button since I need them for upper cabinets. So I click on the cabinet door and then on the pencil icon. Now I need to change the position of the added and subtracted profile to the button. I select the subtracted profile, then close the button padlock and unlock the top one. The cross-section profile remains rectangular, but I need to change the reference point to the top right. So the 40mm has been cut off the bottom of the profile. For the edit profile I do the same, keeping the horizontal frontal profile. Then closing the button padlock and unlocking the top. Clicking on the cogwheel icon in the cross-section profile tab, I first mirror the profile along the y-axis, then move the reference point to the top right corner. So the handle fits perfectly on the door front. The last step is to save it. Be the name front double H lower wrench. I make an ash version of this one too. I select the old ash material on the second tab of the first one, then save it. That's it, we are done with the fronts. All that's left is to replace the doors on the cabinets. I go to the design center and find the newly created fronts in the kitchen cabinet door category. I select front double H upper ash and drag it onto this store cabinet, then select the command use as car case front. The default fronts are replaced, but the custom ones are not. I can replace these in the properties of the cabinet. I also need to modify the middle one as it has to have a button handle. I click on it and enter its properties with the pencil. I Alt plus click to select the middle door and instead of the default front, I select the front WH lower ash from the library. I Alt plus click to select the top door and change it to Front double H lower wench. I accept and continue with the next cabinet. I go back to the design center and drag the door again onto the other tall cabinet. Then choose to replace fronts. Here again I need to change two fronts, so I go into the cabinet properties. Then Alt plus click to select the custom front 
and replace it with a dark one. Then I change the upper front to the ash one with the button handle. I continue with other cabinets. I don't need to modify the base cabinets and the wall cabinets. Only the custom fronted cabinet requires further modification. I use the pencil icon to go into the properties. Then Alt plus click to select the button front. Then change it to the bench front with lower hidden handle. I delete the placed front. And we are done. Now let's look at the door animations, how these cabinets open. I click on one of them and the door animation marker appears. Click on it to see how the doors and drawers open and close. Let's move to the next topic, creating a curved kitchen element. If we look at the floor plan, we have two curved elements already. Only the third closing element needs to be created. I can do this using interior KBB cabinet command. First, I set the properties of the door. Let it be the ash front I just made. It is not in my favorites, so I have to look it up in the library. On the button tab, I set it to hide handle since the front I selected contains hidden handles already. I also set the side panels to be the ash front. Now I have to create the curved shape. To do this, I choose the shape tab, then the custom one. If I have already created and saved a basic body in the library, I can use it. If not, I have to create a new shape by adding the object with the star icon. A shape appears, which I can profile in three directions. I select the floor plan profile, then click on the star icon. I will draw the floor plan view using the guidelines. I start at the corner point, then click all the way through the straight sections. Here I need to create an arc, which I'll do with the arc command. I specify the end point, then the intermediate point of the arc, and it is done. I'm back to the starting point with the straight line. I use Enter to close the command and OK to accept the shape. I need to set the basic dimensions of the cabinet. The height of the legs should be 150 mm and the height of the car case should be 700 mm. I then need to adjust the panel settings. Archline makes a suggestion for the sides, but this needs to be checked. In the Custom Panel Properties tab, we can use the arrows to switch between panels and change their type if necessary. The first is a button panel, the second is a front, these are real. The third is a side panel that I need to change to a front. The other panel settings are correct. Let's get the fronts in place. Moving to Doors tab, I place a door opening to the left in each zone. The curved cabinet is done. I save it to the library. Let's name it Curved Corpus and put it in the Kitchen Base Cabinets categories. I click OK to close the dialog and place the cabinet on the floor plan. Let's see it in 3D. As you can see, now we need to make the matching curved countertop and plinth for the curved cabinet. I can also delete the worktop and make a new one or modify the existing one. I go back to the floor plan and enter the countertop component mode. This means that in addition to the path, I can also edit all of its sides. I move the top node to the start of the arc and then insert a node at the end of the bottom straight section. Then, all I have to do is to turn the section between the two nodes into curved edge. This completes the curved countertop.
All that's left is to align the plinth with the arc. Let's see how. I'll do that on the floor plan too. I select the plinth, then move the top node to the end point of the inner arc, and then insert a node at the end point of the bottom straight section, as I did for the counter. I turn the section between the two nodes into curved edge. Done. Let's check it out in 3D with walk animation. I choose the command view animation, walk and fly, walk. Getting closer, I see that something is wrong with the curved elements. The hidden handle cuts into the side panel at the curves. This needs to be modified. I click on the cabinet, then on the pencil icon. Since these are curved items, the panels do not meet perpendicularly. I can fix this in the Custom Edge Properties tab. This cabinet has 12 edges. I need to select the right one. I can navigate easily between the edges using the arrows. One of them will be Edge 5. I'll change it to be wheeled fit. This way, the handle no longer cuts into the side panel. I will find other edge, and this will be edge 6. I'm going to convert that to a wheeled fit as well. I override the cabinet in the Save tab. Let's look at the next one. I click on it, then use the pencil icon to enter its properties. I navigate to the edge. There it is. I'm going to switch to be wheeled fit. I find the other one, then change it as well. When I'm done, I overwrite it and close the dialog. I restore the original view. In the next step, I change the color of the fronts of the cabinets. Not with the method we used at the beginning of the workshop, but with a different one, which will be much faster. Always creating new fronts is a time-consuming process. I enter the Design Center and select the colors from the Materials catalog. I enlarge the menu a bit to see two columns. I choose two gray colors, one light and one dark. Let's make these two light gray and rusty gray. I grab the light gray and drag it onto the 3D window. And then I select the command replacing one material with another. I select the light ash front, so I've changed all doors with that material to gray. I choose the dark gray to do the same, except this time I choose the darker Wedgwood front. This way I can create different color variations very quickly. I go back to the floor plan and now show you some useful commands. Let's start with the exploded view. I can do this using documentation quantity takeoff cabinet exploded view command or I can reach it from the furniture's local menu too. If I right click on it, here is the command for exploded view. Let's see what this does. A group appears that I can place on the floor plan. The elements of the selected corpus, their names and dimensions are shown. I can right click on the figure to enter the group and edit it or add something to it. I always have to exit the group before I can continue. The exploded view only works on items that we have created. It does not work on library or downloaded items. The next thing we will look at will be the tags. I get to that under documentation tags. First, I have to select the discipline interior. Within that, I can specify different types of elements, right now, the cabinet. I can specify which parameters the text should list. If I don't need one of them, I can simply uncheck it, but I can also add other parameters. I add components, quantities by clicking on the arrow. I can even assign prefixes to these. For example, display width as W, depth as D, and height as H. I apply and accept, then choose tags, place tags command. I approve the tag I just created. In the dialog, I can format it. I can set the font, the style of the cells. I accept the default setting. I need to select the cabinet I want to assign the tag to and place it. Since I have also selected the components, we can see the same list of the components as the exploded view. We can also see the width, height, depth value with the prefixes set. 
There is a live link between the tag and the furniture, so if I change any dimensions of the furniture, the change will be reflected on the tag after updating it. The update is accessed from the tag's local menu. I can also delete the connecting line, as the link remains. The last topic we'll cover is to make an Excel list. This can be accessed by clicking on the documentation quantity takeoff Excel list. I will select the interior calculation and within that the cabinets. I will unselect the export BIM parameters and click OK. I have to save the Excel list. Let's see what it contains. This is a multi-tab list which includes a summary and a detailed breakdown. Let's look at the furniture details. All car cases and their components are listed. That is why it's a good idea to save the furniture and components we created so they are easily identifiable in the list. We can also see their types and sizes. Under the summary tab, we can find how many square meters of the given panel and the front we will need. I close Excel and go back to the program. This will bring us to the end of the workshop. I hope you found it interesting and useful. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, have a nice day. Bye-bye.